Hey guys, this is Billy from Engadget uh, here at CES 2015, and I am here with RZA from Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, yeah. What up, Billy? What up? What up? What up? What up? It's uh, it's good to have you here at the Engadget stage, um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about some speakers. So. That's right. We got the Boombot Rex, you know, and uh, we have the limited series that we had put out with the Wu Tang album, "A Better Tomorrow," was embedded into the music. Uh, and today, uh, we just launched with Zoomies a new edition. So uh, you can go online and grab this one right here with a new design. And, um, you know, we are striving to connect people back to their music. You know, technology, of course, is the greatest thing in the world. That's why we're here. But uh, music is something that should be connected to you and it's something that you can have for yourself. And uh, that's what we're doing here. Boombox. Rex. <laughs> so, so just to be clear, this this black guy, uh, black one right here, black and gold, was the first limited edition that was released with the album before the album was widespread release for everyone to listen to. Yeah, exactly. So the people who um who purchased that, they got a first listen into the new music, and I think this is a platform that could be used for many artists. You know, if you think about the music industry, um, you know, they're looking for ways to reach the retail market because the record stores have closed down. And also the consumer experience of, of going into a brick and mortar has diminished. But when you look at something like the Boombox Rex, we are able to bring music fans to locations they wouldn't normally go. So take a store like Zoomies who sold out in like one, two days, but had a, a higher traffic rate of consumers because of they came in to buy the new Wu-Tang album. And what we're doing also, um, we have the Boombox Rex Plus. Now, what's cool about this one, Billy, check this out. What we did, right, first of all, we increased the, uh, the cabinet. So we have maybe about 90 dBs is going to pump out of this thing, all right? That's a lot for yeah, a little speaker. Yeah, that's a lot for a little speaker. And then to top it off, we've now, not only is music embedded into it, you can also put your whole playlist in here. I okay. mean, two gigs, two gigs of information. So somebody who has their phone and maybe your phone battery is dead or something, you still got your music and it's waterproof. You could take a dip in the pool after school, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Get out with your girl, have your little pool party rocking. And, um, you know, it's super portable. And I think music is something that should be connected. It's also something that should be part of your fun, yo. It's interesting that that one's waterproof because um, with the regular Boombot Rex, something that you talked about is being able to clip it on a backpack, right. on your bike, something like that. So it's always with you. Um, so the waterproof right, exactly. edition, if you get caught in the rain. Right, caught in the rain. And also, yo, listen, you know, I've been spending some time in California. Uh, I'm a New Yorker, but I have been spending time in California, hanging out at the beaches. And uh, you want to get in the water sometimes. You see my surfboard guys out there surfing. Right. Now they can surf the rhythm. Be like, dun, 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 You know what I mean? Right. So um, let's talk a little bit about how you came to work with this company specifically. Um, I know a lot of people might see a speaker this size and think, an album on a speaker that size, okay, that's, a, that's an all right idea. But, you know, there are certainly a myriad of other options that you could have gone with. So why specifically this speaker and uh, Boombot? Well, the cool thing about the company Boombotics um, was that their speaker was ultra portable. You know what right. I mean? And, and being a guy that, you know, that's a, I'm a rugged type of guy. And I know, you know, if you, you, know, if you ride on your bike or you're jogging, you know, and you could just clip this speaker on. That, that attracted me to them just as a company. But what they did was uh, they reached out to me and wanted to put a logo, the Wu-Tang logo, on the speaker, you know, to help, you know, whatever. And I was like, great idea, but no, I got a better idea. Let's put the music into the speaker. I mean, I really felt, you know, I come from the era when I would go to the record stores and I'll buy the record and I'll look at it and I'll read who made the music and, and those things are gone. So I wanted to find a way to reconnect people back to their music. Right. And the guys at Boombotics was like, yo, great idea. And so they had a new model called the Boombot Rex. And they said, let's try to see if we could embed your album into it. And this, to me, 
is um like I said, it's a, it's just a new model that can help the music industry within itself. And I had a great team of young guys, uh, Mustafa and Leaf over at the company who rushed to China, <laughs> right? And they had to go over there and 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 stop their production and change the uh, format. And they we figured out how to embed the music into the speaker, but we also figured out now. You know, the the speaker is embedded with music, but it gives you two gigs where you can put your own music in. Right. And so, and I want to keep pushing that further and further as we can. You know, maybe, you know, we'll get to the day where all these speakers are connected, connected through Bluetooth, right? Let's give you a quick idea. So imagine you're at a pool party. You come up, you got your little speaker on, which has some wattage, but it's not strong enough. Right. Then your buddy comes with his speaker, and it's getting louder and louder and louder, and now the party's popping. But guess what? The cops come. The neighbors are complaining. <laughs> okay, just shut it down. Each person shut it down and go back to a private party. This idea is to, um, to make music connected to you and, uh, and to have fun, yo. Just going back to what you mentioned briefly, and it's something that you've talked about before in talking about these speakers, is the idea of releasing your album on a speaker, embedded in a speaker, is a way for people to possess music once again um, and sort of get back to that, um, a little bit back to that thought of going to the record store, buying things, and then you own it instead of it just being some digital file that's on your computer or... Yeah, I think most of the consumers, and, and I'm not knocking them because, you know, right. that's what technology has have taken us to. Most consumers don't realize that a digital file, you know, once in your phone or in your computer, is kind of not really yours, yo. You know, and, and, and you need your phone or your computer to enjoy your music. In the good old days, you know, we was able to have uh, a turntable or, or a Walkman. Well, this is bringing that back, as well as still keeping up with technology of today. So, you know, we're talking to other artists, um, you know, who are very interested in releasing their music um, through the, through the Boombox Rex as a first taste for their consumers. Um, the way we are planning is that soon you'll have exclusive music. Like, so let's take a, a guy like Childish Gambino, who, who I'm a big fan of. Right. And we're talking to him about maybe just doing a special album for your fans that's released through this and there's no other way to get it. Of course, eventually somebody will upload it, but I mean, just to make something personal for yourself, to, to reconnect your fans and your consumers to your music. So, obviously you're not the only member of the Wu-Tang Clan. No, I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, what was it like did you have to lobby real hard to get those guys on board with the release? Yeah, well, I had to lobby a little bit. The cool thing is that um, Inspector Deck, he was one of the first guys that came on the tour bus with a Bluetooth speaker. Okay. Uh, uh, another brand, right? And we'd be on the bus and, uh, and you know, kind of everybody would be doing their own thing and you'll hear from his bunk music playing at a, at a good level. So... He was like, yeah, that's a cool idea, you know, to, just to have a Wu-Tang speaker. He thought that was just cool. Right. I was like, nah, nah, nah. The album is in it, kid. <laughs> he said, what? The album is in it. And he hit the button and he hit play. He was like, yo, that's stupid. You know what I mean? Stupid meaning good. You know right, I mean? right. <laughs> but uh, no, so some of the guys wasn't into technology like that. But uh, once... Um, the Boombotics team showed them what it was and what it, and what it could be for the future. Um, everybody's on board. I mean, I think that one thing that's special is that, uh, you know, forget releasing new music, but there's also a lot of catalog music out there. Right, exactly. So imagine you have this speaker and, you know, you re-release Old Dirty's Bastard album. Artwork, everything, and now it's back in your hand in a different way. So it's like a reissue. Yeah. But... Speaker a lot of re issues, issue. yeah. A lot of re issues can happen through this. I mean, you know, we, you know, we, we're talking to some of the major labels about, um, you know, just really taking this idea seriously, and by reconnecting fans to their music. You know, now a phone is a phone, and our phones are. I mean, you can open your oven with the phone now, right? <laughs> which is cool. Yep. But you still gotta charge your phone, and it, and and if the phone rings, it interrupts whatever your other lifestyle. So to me, music should always have its own place. You know what I mean? 
And this, to me, puts it back in his own place. So I kind of want to talk about the album for a little bit, if that's okay. okay. <laughs> so um, you guys haven't exactly been together in a, in a sense of all in the same place at the same time a lot over the past few years. Um, and, you know, uh, all the members are prolific solo artists as well. True. Sure. And uh, you're, you yourself are a producer um, and even produced uh, the new album. So what was it like get, sort of getting everyone back together for, for this new album? It was pretty challenging. Everybody having their own schedule and their own managers and right. their own lawyers. Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, but we did it. You know, I think the Wu-Tang means more collectively than we do individually. Meaning we all respect that Wu-Tang as our foundation. We respect the fans who embraced us and got tattoos of our logo on their bodies and support our product. So we, um, so it was a challenge, but we got it done. You know, and, and, the, and the, the record is called The Better Tomorrow. Because to me, I don't care how good you have in a day, you want to have a better tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and for some of us in the world, we need a better tomorrow. You know what I mean? So... That was the concept, and all my brothers came on board, and uh, we got it done. Uh, and, and one of the things that really stuck out to me is uh, there's o ODB is on the record, uh, which is really cool. Um, were those just older samples that you had collected sort of over the years and used them here? Yeah, ODB was able to, um, he, he, he recorded a lot of stuff. I have a lot of like old takes of some of his music. But the cool thing about that particular appearance was uh, Rick Rubin was uh, co-producing with me on right. uh, Ruckus yep. and B Minor. And Rick actually requested some ODB. He said, you, you, I need some ODB. He, wa he wanted to sort of figure out the, the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, okay, you know what? I think I got something for you. And I sent him some files. And uh, he placed them in. He called me over to the studio down in Malibu. And I got there and he played his, uh, his interpretation of the mix. And it sounded great, yo. And, um, and it was the first time me and Rick Rubin ever collaborated musically. I mean, we've been buddies and we hung out and we ate, ate food, but we never made music together. Right. And so, uh, you know, ODB spirit and the whole Wu-Tang Clan, you know, was something that we felt that had a historical value. And uh, thus, you got the song Ruckus in B minor. So you mentioned Rick, Rick Rubin, who is a massively busy producer. He, yeah. he works... So many albums with his name on it come out every year. So as a producer yourself, what was it like to work with somebody who's, for lack of a better term, an icon in terms of production, music industry, and so on? I mean, it was a pleasure and a joy, you know. The cool thing about Rick is I think we both have grown to a certain zen level of life. Right. So we'll be uh, in the studio. He has this big, long couch in the studio. Because he loves, you know, he, he keeps relaxed. So we would be there and I'll be relaxed like this. Right. He'll relax. Our feet may touch or something. <laughs> then we go, okay, okay, let's get up. <laughs> then, uh, then we go back to the music. But that uh, was fun, man. And um, he's a very busy man. And I'm glad he took um, time. He's, he spent maybe like six days on this song, man. And I, 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 I can't thank him enough, you know, to give me and the Wu-Tang Clan that time of his life, you know, towards our music. And, and some of the, the tracks or, or parts of the new album were recorded at the, the so-called Wu-Tang Mansion. Yeah. Um, so it's a studio that you're familiar with, obviously. Um, could you talk a little bit about maybe what it was like to just go back there to make this album that a lot of people have been waiting on for a while? Well, the cool thing about making this record is that I looked at technology and I looked at where it came from. So if you take a listen to my record, you'll hear instruments from the 60s. Right. Uh, I recorded some songs in Memphis with Al Green and Willie Mitchell and Otis Redding and the Stacks. Uh, I recorded songs in uh, Los Angeles with um, Adrian Young using the sound of the Delphonics. I went to Philadelphia with Gamble and Huff. And then I went to the Wu-Tang Mansion where we had our biggest record, Wu-Tang Forever. And all the equipment that I used, I mean, I used from the basic old analog 4-track to 8-track to 24-track, and I ended up on Pro Tools and Ableton 9. And so it was not only a, a, a journey of music, it was also the journey of technology. Gotcha. 
And um, and the Wu, we call it a Wu Tang Mansion because you know I grew up in the projects where my house is maybe 200 square feet, and now the, right. it's 8,000 square feet, so it right. feels like a mansion to us. Right. But um, the studio um is a mixture of 80s and 90s equipment and the modern equipment all blended together seamlessly. So you have an SSL board who gives you this analog sound, but then you also have all the software and all the plugins, you know, for this Ezo type and all these guys that's making music sound great today. Right. So it was, a, it was as much about getting inspiration from as many places as possible uh, during the course of the whole thing. Yes, yes, it was. I mean, music comes from all of us, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, there was a point we was in Europe, in Amsterdam. Now, you know if you're in Amsterdam, you know what I mean? You got some good things going on out there, I haven't there, right? been there personally, but I hear, go, that's what yeah, I hear. That's right? what I hear. So, after a nice visit to the coffee shop in Amsterdam, <laughs> we went to the studio and we recorded there. We was uh, in Switzerland in the studio, uh, Germany. Uh, London. So, so this this record was a world record. We always, you know, I always had a studio book for the guys that yo, we're gonna be in town four or five days. Let's pop in the studio, even if we get one verse. It's just good to keep that energy going. So, uh, what's what's next for you immediately? I know you're um, working with Boombotics. Is on your work with them is ongoing. It's ongoing. You know, we're gonna, uh, we, like we said, I'm 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 just helping them to. Maybe secure some strong releases. I mean, I'm really pushing this idea of, of music getting back into the people's hand, right. connecting us to the music, and hopefully other artists will resonate with this idea. They'll look at this and go, yo, it's a great way. The worst case scenario, Billy, is this is a great marketing tool, right? It's true. That's the worst case scenario. But at the same time, when you look at somebody like Zoomies, you know, selling three or 4,000 copies out in a week, you know what I mean? Uh, it also can be lucrative for artists. Right. So, any chance maybe there'll be a special edition Boombot Rex Plus with a RZA solo album at some point? Oh, oh, maybe. The I think that's a great idea. Tank could be dangerous. You heard it here first in Gadget Stage, CES 2015. Uh, well, we're almost out of time, so I want to thank you for, for joining us today. It was great. Well, thank you, and Gadget. I love y'all's show. My first time at CES. Bong, bong. Oh, it's pretty crazy, right? Your first time? It's, it's cool. It's nuts. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. There's plenty more fr here from the Engadget stage coming later today, so stay tuned.